This ribeye steak with a beautiful crust and a wall-to-wall -wall medium rare interior was made by professional meat man, Max the Meat Guy. But even though Max is a pro, his recipe can easily be adapted for beginner cooks to flawlessly perfect the ribeye steak every time with just a kitchen oven. For example, here's the last steak I cooked. Barely any crust, not evenly cooked, and arguably worst of all, I burned the butter. But here's the steak I made using a slightly modified version of Max's recipe. Just like I told you, perfection. And here's how I did it. So Max started out his recipe with an inch and a half thick ribeye steak that he dry aged in his fridge for 40 days. In short, the dry aging process gives the steak a unique rich taste and a tenderness that is unmatched. Unfortunately, I do not have a dry ager, dry age bags, or 40 days. Also, I quickly researched how much a dry aged ribeye cost, and one single steak can cost over a hundred dollars. So for beginners on a budget, I suggest skipping the dry age step just like me. However, I will not skimp out on the thickness of the steak. The last time I cooked steaks, I used the pre-butchered packaged steaks at the store. And while the marbling wasn't terrible, they were extremely thin, which was problematic because thin steaks cook super fast. So I basically had to pick whether I wanted a nice sear on the steak or a medium to medium rare interior. The best value I could find for a thick steak was buying a whole ribeye roast like this one. Now altogether, this ribeye roast was over $200, which yes, it does sound expensive, but if you break it down, it's a pretty good deal. You can get around 13 inch and a half thick steaks in this roast. When compared to the three quarter of an inch pre-butchered steaks, which go for like $20 per steak, it's a no-brainer. But alternatively, if you don't need 13 steaks, you can just ask your butcher to cut you as many inch and a half steaks as you need. Max bound his steak with some butcher's twine, which will help keep the muscles of the ribeye together during the cook and allow them to cook evenly. So I'll do the same and I recommend you do as well. Now it's time for seasoning. And the only seasoning we need at this point is salt. And that's because pepper and any other seasonings will likely burn when we sear this steak. So we can add those later on during the cook. And I'm using coarse salt, but you can absolutely use table salt here. Just don't get too heavy handed because it's much easier to over salt with table salt because it's much finer. After seasoning, Max recommends letting the steak dry brine overnight. Dry brining allows the moisture from the steak to be drawn out before penetrating deeply into the meat, allowing an even distribution of salt, and more importantly, leaves the surface of the meat dry. With a dry surface, the steak will have a much easier time developing a nice dark crust due to a process called the Maillard reaction. And now the steak is ready to cook, and here is where most of my beginner-friendly modifications will start to take place. So Max's technique is called the double crust method, which is an awesome technique because it gives you a perfect wall-to-wall -wall medium rare while giving you an insane deep brown crust. The first thing Max did was sear his steak on all sides on a hot oiled pan, buttered and seasoned the steak and cooked it with indirect heat on his charcoal grill. Once it was done, he seared it one more time directly over the coals while basting it with the melted butter. Now, working with a lot fire already takes this recipe into the advanced cooking levels. Also, not everyone has a barbecue in their backyard. So to make this recipe easier and also make it accessible to everyone, I recommend searing the steak on the stove top and then cooking it in the oven. So get a cast iron or carbon steel pan oiled and hot. Now, depending on the power of your range, be careful not to go too hot. On my last steak cook, I used the Sidekick burner on my Camp Chef Woodwind Pro and the oil got so hot, it burst into flames, almost torching my steak. So to prevent you from burning down your house, I recommend buying one of these laser thermometers for like 20 bucks on Amazon. That way you can know exactly how hot the pan is before your oil bursts into flames. Got it. And in terms of temperature, according to the Thermalworks blog, they recommend searing the steak when the pan is around 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And a quick trick for those who don't have a laser thermometer and don't wanna buy one is to go off of the smoke point of the oil. For instance, I'm using avocado oil, which has a smoke point of around 520 degrees Fahrenheit. So if the oil starts to smoke, you know it's way past the target of 450 degrees Fahrenheit and it's time to lower down the heat. So when searing a steak, Max recommends ensuring that the surface of the meat has contact with the 
the pan so you get a nice even sear. So feel free to press it down on each side to ensure an even contact. It should take about three to four minutes on each side, not forgetting the edges, but mainly go off of the color. We want a nice deep golden brown on both sides. But don't go too crazy here. Remember, this is the double crust method. So we'll have one more chance to sear at the end. Now set the oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit so we can get the interior of the steak cooked to an even medium rare. Problem is, if we just place the steak directly on a baking sheet and stick that in the oven, the moisture will pull at the bottom of the pan and kind of boil our steak ruining the crust. So to fix this, we need some very cheap and very accessible tools, which are a disposable foil pan and a wire cooking sheet rack. Just make sure that the rack is big enough to go over the foil pan and not fall in. The two inches of space between the steak and the bottom of the foil pan will allow the moisture to drip down without disturbing the crust. More importantly, it will be a massive help during the next step, the seasoning. So to the top of the steak, add garlic powder, pepper, rosemary, thyme, and pads of butter. As the steak cooks, the butter and seasoning will melt and baste the steak. Also, thanks to the foil pan, we can collect all of that melted butter and baste it for a second time when it's time for the second sear. The last time I cooked steak, I tried to butter baste while I was searing the steak and I ended up burning the butter. But with Max's method, it's almost impossible to burn the butter, making it virtually bulletproof for beginners. Now we wanna cook this steak to an internal temperature of 115 degrees Fahrenheit. That way we can achieve that perfect medium rare once it's done. So I recommend getting one of these probe thermometers to make sure the steak gets cooked perfectly to that temperature. Now, you could absolutely use a handheld thermometer like this, but opening and closing the oven is going to fluctuate the oven's temperature. Plus, you'll be punching holes all over your beautiful steak. A probe thermometer like this one is only like $15 on Amazon, and I promise you'll end up using this thing all the time. And I'll have links in the description for all the tools I mentioned in this video. Also with the steak, I will be cooking Max's garlic bombs, which look absolutely insane and are super easy to make. Just cut off the tops of a couple of bulbs of garlic, add olive oil, salt, and thyme, and they're ready. Max used these bombs like a butter to smear on the steak, and I know it tasted incredible. Because I roasted garlic, when I tried Sunny from That Dude Can Cook's ultimate steak recipe, and the pairing was a match made in heaven. Then place the garlic on a wire rack and let them roast with the steak. And a bonus to this is that that garlicky oil will drip off of the bulbs and mix with that basting butter at the bottom of the foil pan. The garlic should finish at the same time as the steak, which should be around 30 minutes. And once done, we can get the final sear. So put the steak back on the hot pan and get a second sear, flipping it frequently while spooning on that butter mixture from the bottom of the foil roasting pan. This should only take a couple of minutes. Then the steak needs to rest just for a few minutes before we slice it up. Max's recipe combines the techniques of a pan sear and a reverse sear. And with my minor adjustments, any level of cook can pull off a beautiful crusty ribeye. But one thing that this steak lacks in comparison to Max's is charcoal flavor. And me personally, I love the taste of charcoal on steak. So another option is to take this recipe and adapt it to a pellet grill. A pellet grill is basically an outdoor oven with smoke. So the instructions and ease of this recipe will translate perfectly. And they actually make charcoal pellets along with any other wood type you can think of. For recommendations, I like the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro. Not only because of the smoke box feature, which lets you use wood chunks in tandem with wood pellets, but also because of the Sidekick flat top. That way you can sear and smoke your steak on one single cooker. And I'll have a link to that in the description so you can check it out. Another thing on my last video is that I realized that I cut the steak completely wrong. Because of the crust, I couldn't see where the grains of the meat were going, so I ended up cutting the eye of the ribeye vertically. So I expect that this steak is going to be much more tender than the last one. Along with all of the other improvements and tricks for this recipe, this bite should be insane. Okay, okay, this is easily 
the best steak I've ever made. So while I was cooking this steak, I was a little bit concerned because you only season one side of the steak when you put it in the oven. But on the second sear, because you're spooning all of that seasoned butter on both sides of the steak, this steak is seasoned perfectly. Also, these garlic bombs are so insane. Like you can literally just pick it up and eat it by itself. So good. Mm. But eating it in tandem with the steak, it is insane. Watch the next video on your screen where I tried another beef recipe. This time, Guga Foods Beef Rib Lollipop. And I'll see you guys over there.